Joining us now is UFC flyweight Jared Brooks. Jared, welcome to Half the Battle. What's up, guys? Um, very, very happy to be on the show. Thank you. Oh, man, it's our pleasure. So, dude, right off the bat, I got to ask you, you excited to go down to Brazil and have everyone uh, screaming, you're going to die in Portuguese as you walk out? You know, uh, every time I've been to a, another country, uh, they've always shown me love. They've always shown me respect. Uh, so, I mean, going down there, it, it's probably going to be a little bit different, but I feed on love and hate. So if they, the more they hate me, the more they love me. So I'm fine with that. You know, Jared, uh, you had a very uh, good UFC debut win. You know, you, sh you went through adversity. You uh, showed that your uh, wrestling was on a different level than Shelton. And Shelton had fought some uh, high-level opponents on the tough show. And now you're fighting another undefeated guy. Uh, where do you see that you're going to uh, take advantage of the flaws in his game? Well, um, I just see he, he, he's a one-punch kind of guy. Um, you know, he, he's a, he's a well-rounded fighter. He's in the UFC, of course, but... I see uh, a lot of flaws in his game. Um, he he's stays in guard a lot when he gets taken down, and uh, that just doesn't sound good uh, on his part. So I think that he, um, he he hits very hard for a flyweight, but he's unfortunately slow and uh, incompetent at stopping a takedown. So I think that uh, I'm going to go in there and finish him within the first three rounds. So. Now, Jared, I, I know you're a very cerebral guy. I know you, you think, you know, you know, you talk a lot, so people think that you're just a trash talker, but I know you're a very smart guy. So when you're watching the tape and you see your opponent gassing out by round two, I mean, are you licking your chops at this opportunity? I love it, man. I've always stayed in shape. Um, uh, my movement was just a little bit too much in the first fight uh, with Shelton. And um, I, I kind of was inconsistent with my with my movement compared to my striking, and it's something that I uh, observed in that fight. So um, I think that you know jitters are out of the way, and um, you're gonna see me come out and uh, fight like the real Jared Brooks. And uh, I'm telling you, within the next few fights, you're gonna see me within the in the top five going against some of the best of the best. So yeah, and Jared, you know the flyweight division is, in my opinion, one of the uh, best up and coming divisions in the UFC and there's guys coming out you know left and right and uh, you know with a big win here against another undefeated guy you will be in that top 15 um, do you have your eye on anyone in that top 15 after you get this win dude I would really I, I would hate to uh, you know wave down somebody uh, from an injury but I would like to see Henry Zahudo not fight in that fight in Detroit uh, I mean, I live in Michigan. I live probably like 25 minutes from Detroit. I build a fan base down here in Michigan. So if I could fight Sergio Pettis uh, tomorrow, I would. I think it's a very good uh, fight for me. And I think that uh, someone like him is a stepping stone in order for me to get to that flyweight championship. Well, it's interesting you say that, man, because, you know, Henry Cejudo, if you go look up his uh, topology. He's got the most pullouts out of anyone on the UFC roster, so you might be in luck, man. Uh, you know, he might actually pull out of this one. Yeah, I think that he has. Um, you know, those those front top frontier guys, uh, they have problems with uh, wanting to go down and uh, have somebody step up and and fight up in competition. So. Um, I, I think you're uh, you're a little mixed up with Ian McCall at that point too, because Ian McCall is <laughs> back out too. And uh, Ian, if you're listening, I would still love to fight you, even though you're a big old flashy pussy. Hey, so speaking of which, is it you know is it official to say that you retired Ian McCall now that he's over there in Ryzen, you know, where uh, the competition's easier? You know what? Uh, I told I told him. Uh, Right before the fight, you know, it was a two week notice fight with me and him. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, I'm going to be the fight to retire you out of the UFC. And um, I didn't even have to fight him. I think that it, it was just a mental aspect. And I ran into him outside of UFC 214 after I fought and, you know, you, you know, made him feel a little bit better about himself. But he said he had some mental problems and said that something's wrong with his head and, and stuff like that. I just don't think that he is, uh, he's willing to fight anybody that's not in, you know, title contention because he thinks that he's there. But uh, in my opinion, 
I mean, you were fighting three to four guys at that point. You weren't fighting the whole division like I am. So um, as soon as I'm the champion, I'm going to be fighting people that are as low as me. And I've been doing that my whole life. So I'm prepared. And, um, you know, my opponent coming up, I think that he is a, a very skilled mixed martial artist, but he's not at my level. And you all see that October 28th. Yeah, Jared, you know, you're from uh, Detroit. It's uh, There's a lot of UFC fighters coming out of there. You, Cody Stamen, uh, Bobby Nash, Miles Jury, Kevin Lee just had a good performance. Um, how was it training in Detroit? And I, I noticed that you're coached by uh, James Lee, who's like a super old school vet and uh, has a super experience in the game. How is it uh, training there? Oh, man, um, the past year and a half, I've just uh, skyrocketed in my talent and uh, – and just my conditioning and the the preparation that I've that I've had going into fights. I mean, I uh, I met James a, a year and a half ago, and he was like, "Hey, man, uh, are you one to to be a UFC champion?" And I was just like, "Yeah." He's like, "I've never heard anybody say that. They say that they want to just make it to the UFC." So, um, yeah, James is is a big key in my preparation. He's not only a coach; he's a manager. He's he's like my he's like a father figure. I mean, I live at his house. He always makes sure that I, I got some money in my pocket, even if I go broke, because you know how good the UFC pays us. So, <laughs> Let me ask you this, man, because, look, there's only been one champion in your weight class, and, you know, obviously you're a few fights away from that. Do you think you're the man to dethrone the great Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson? Well, uh, I'm an analyst, man. I've, I think that... Uh, <laughs> Besides fighting, I could go and uh, commentate in the UFC also. I mean, I pay attention to every fight in the UFC. I pay attention to every fighter coming in or out of the, the flyweight division. So um, I've studied Demetrius Johnson since 2011, before he was in the UFC. So um, I, I'm i going to fight exactly like Demetrius Johnson. I feel like that's the way to beat him because there's a lot of people out there that have such different – uh, fighting styles, and there's nobody that can beat Demetrius but his own style, and I think that I can bring that to him. And, you know, Jared, for your debut, you know, uh, after the fight, after you got your hand raised, you, you felt like you looked like shit. Um, in my opinion, man, I thought you looked good. I mean, to be honest, the, the only, you know, sketchy situation was when you got dropped briefly with that uh, uppercut, but, I mean, your recovery time was very on point, and, I mean, I felt like you came back and – you know, won that round even though you got dropped, so that round, you know, gets goes to him. But the first two rounds, man, I thought you uh, showed good fight IQ. That first round, you stayed on top of him, almost had that guillotine. And then that second round, you rocked him with a left hook. And, I mean, he did a little chicken dance there. Yeah, uh, you know, Eric is a, is a tough fight for anybody in the flyweight division. He's uh, he's kind of he's kind of tall. He has a long reach. He has uh, a, a lot of skills that a lot of people haven't got to see because, uh, you know, he's had split decision losses every other fight. So um, Eric is definitely somebody that uh, I see could be a top five contender. And, um, you know, yeah, he, he, he rocked me in a fight, but that's part of the game. Um, it was just, I think if I fought him today, I think it would be a, a way different fight. And I, it just had a lot to do with the UFC jitters. You know, my dad being there and, you know, because this is not only my dream, this is my dad's dream also. And, you know, just seeing him, it was just a very emotional experience. But now I'm going in there uh, with a reason to to want to be a, the flyweight champion of the world. So. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Eric Shelton's a super talented guy, and that fight, so you take him down, and, you know, I know for a fact Eric Shelton knows how to wall walk. I know Eric Shelton knows how to push down the, on the head and, you know, pull the leg out, get back up. You know he knows how to do those techniques. You made it that he wasn't able to do that. Where'd you learn how to wrestle like that? Dude, um, I got to give all, all my credit uh, in wrestling to my dad and my brother. I've never really been coached uh, besides anybody but them. Um, you know, my brother's always, you know, beat my ass since I was a younger kid. And if my brother was not, uh, you know, working in Florida and didn't have the the love for the sport that I do, I feel like he would be in the top five in the UFC division also. My brother was 12-0 uh, and 0 as an amateur and just didn't um, – didn't really want to do it anymore. He was uh, kind of pressured by my dad, but my dad, he, um, 
he he's definitely one of the best uh, wrestlers and motivators that I've ever met in my life, and uh, has always made me mentally strong no matter what. So. And, you know, Jared, it seems like every event now we have guys, you know, that are struggling to make weight or pulling out because they can't make weight. And I noticed that you have some fights at 115 pounds. So I'm assuming that a flyweight cut isn't that bad for you? Literally, I'm probably about 131 right now, uh, topping wet. And that doesn't matter if I'm four months out or four weeks out. I'm usually around the same weight. Um, my, my strength is my strength, man. I've, um, you know, grappling wise, I, I, I'm probably like a 160 pound man on top of somebody, but I only weigh about 130 to 125 pounds during the fight weeks. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, I have a, a lot of power compared to my weight and, um, you guys will see that October 28th. Now, I could be wrong, but it seems to me like you gravitate towards the wrestling more than the striking. However, your striking is still pretty damn good, man. I mean, do you think there's going to be some performances where you keep it standing the entire time, knock guys out or outstrike them for three? Uh, like, like I, I said, said, it's just depending on who I'm fighting. If I'm fighting somebody like Eric Shelton, which is uh, primarily a striker, uh, Muay Thai guy being coached by Pete Spratt, somebody like Pete, um, I'm going to take the dude down. I'm going to make sure that he doesn't feel uh, comfortable on the feet compared to uh, being on the ground also. But, um, yeah, I, I think that um, that I'll have some performances to where I, I stay on the feet if I'm going against somebody like, you know, Hector Sandoval or, you know, even like Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson is primarily somebody that takes people down because he's small. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like myself. But, um yeah, if, if I were to fight Demetrius Johnson, I'd probably keep that standing. Now, uh, when you got the call for this fight, were you hoping to fight on the Detroit card instead? Or, you know, because it's a little more added pressure? Or did you just, you know, relish the idea of going into another man's home country and beating him? Hey, whoever they put me up against, wherever I'm at, I'm completely fine and at home with it. Um, you know, I would love to fight in Detroit. I would love to have people from uh, my my home state come and uh, cheer me on and have that kind of energy. Also, um, I, I'm, I'm still open. It's just depending on uh, this performance that I have right now. If I can finish the student in the first round, I'm definitely going to call out anybody in the flyweight division to find Detroit. So, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely glad that I'm fighting in Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go and uh, beat this dude in his home country and then enjoy the, the country for a couple days come back and get back to the drawing board like usual. Well, Jared, it's going down. You versus Davison Alcantara. I know you're going to take a win by any means necessary, but if it were up to you, how would this fight go down, Jared? Well, um, the way I see the fight is, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him with some feints take him to the ground, get him a little bit tired, and then uh, wait for those hands to go down in the second round and uh, knock him out. Well, Jared, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us right here, right now on Half the Battle. It's been an absolute pleasure. Best of luck in Brazil. Let the audience know where they can follow you and any message for the fans. Go ahead, man. Yeah, man. Uh, one, thank you, Half the Battle, for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. And two, um, my name is the underscore monkey god on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me at Jared Brooks. I'm not uh, verified on Facebook, but you guys can follow me. You guys can message me. Uh, I'm not one of those people that ignore people. So anytime that you guys want to hit me up, ask questions, I'm available.